Kata Beach, Thailand, King's Cup Regatta 2010. Twelve boats were dumped on the beach, many more damaged by collisions as their anchors dragged. I was there, it was pitch black at 4 a.m. and absolute carnage. I heard the crunching of yachts colliding, the clashing of rigging, shouting and the constant roar of the surf just behind. My anchor held firm in the hard sand, two sizes oversized, well dug in and plenty of chain. But I had to leave as a big red boat dragged towards my bow. It was a nightmare, on my own, with the crew ashore, threading my way through the chaotic mass of boats to the safety of the open sea. But not all the yachts dragged anchor that night. Most were reasonably secure. The sea was very rough, but the wind never went over 25 knots. The yachts that frequently drag typically have inadequate anchors, not enough chain, and not correctly set. One yacht has dragged onto Catter Beach twice, possibly three times. The big red yacht that attacked me in the night was always drifting off and was nicknamed the Drag Queen. She was written off a few years later when she dragged onto rocks. It's just tragic to see these beautiful yachts wrecked for the sake of a decent anchor. Frequent anchor draggers are a menace in any anchorage and it's totally unnecessary. Some of the anchor manufacturers and training organisations are far too casual about anchoring safety. They recommend gear that is only good for normal conditions. As soon as the wind gets over 20 to 25 knots, boats are in trouble, blaming poor holding or too much wind. The anchor is an important safety device and should keep the boat secure in all conditions. Racing skippers minimise their anchors to avoid extra weight on the bow, which is why so many yachts dragged onto Catter Beach that night. But cruising boats should put safety first. The extra 10 to 15 kilograms for a decent anchor will have no effect on a 10 ton yacht. Anchor dragging is not inevitable. It's up to us to take anchoring seriously. If you are cruising and anchoring out every night in a range of places, you need a really reliable anchor. We love to visit these beautiful places, but they're not always the best anchorages. So you need an anchor which performs well in the difficult seabed types, such as weed, very soft mud, very hard sand, or a rocky bottom. There's a confusing array of anchor tests. Don't focus on the really high figures in soft sand or hard mud. Nobody drags there anyway. Look for the bad results in any test and eliminate those models. They will surely let you down one day. Be wary of the manufacturer-sponsored tests. They give impressive results, but only on their ideal bottom types. If the test results are too confusing, simply go for the anchor with the best reputation. Years ago, I used two anchors, a Delta, which was pretty good, but didn't work in soft mud, and a hinged CQR style that was good in soft mud, but dangerous on hard sand. It used to be an absolute pain sitting on the bow, changing anchors to suit the bottom. But these are now outdated anchors. The new generation of high holding power anchors are a big improvement, particularly with consistency over a wide range of seedbed types. There are several new generation models with good reputations, such as the Manson Supreme and the Spade. And we chose a Rockner. We're very happy with it. The tests show good results for the Rockner, and it's very popular. Bigger is better. How do we decide on a safe anchor size? Let's look at the delta sizing chart for a 40-foot boat. The chart allows a 10 kilogram I wouldn't trust that for anything. They recommend the 16 kilogram, 35 pound. It's okay for normal weather and a good bottom, but will easily drag when challenged. The 20 kilos better, but I went up two sizes and used the 25 kilogram, 55 pound, for reasonable security on the 40 footer we had then. 
But look at the chart, they are specifically not recommending bigger anchors. Why would they not want to sell you a bigger anchor? Maybe it's just a marketing trick, so they can offer the cheapest anchoring solution. Delta do sell a lot of anchors, but they have a poor reputation, mainly due to undersizing. Experienced skippers would always choose one or two sizes bigger, but the new sailor or the cost-conscious charter boat owner is likely to end up with one that's too small. Bigger anchors are better at cutting through the weed or digging into a hard surface, so their performance increases more than just the weight increase. Our new Beneteau 45 came with a 20 kilogram delta, not good enough. We replaced it with a 33 kilogram, 73 pound Rockner, one size bigger than recommended. Our upgraded anchor has at least double the holding power compared to the smaller delta. Beautiful Assos in Greece, forecast for a calm night. But we were woken at 3 a.m. with a massive screaming of the wind, pelting rain, thunder and a loud crash from the stern. We saw in the almost continuous lightning that we had dragged back and the rudder was jammed on the rocks with our heavy dinghy flipped upside down. The next 15 minutes were terrifying, but we had enough pull in the anchor and engine power to get off the rocks. Our oversized rockener saved us that night. We only suffered minor damage. A standard anchor would have left us jammed on the rocks and maybe wrecked. But I wish I'd bought an even bigger rockner. We would have stopped a few meters shorter and not hit anything. This story shows the basic principle of anchoring. The better your gear, the safer you are when it all goes wrong. And if you look after yourself, you're in a better position to help others. In the Assos storm, we saved a big 45-foot cat. His anchor was dragging and he had damaged his engines in the original gust. We towed him off just before he hit the rocks. He was really grateful. What length of anchor chain should we use? This is assuming we use all chain on the windlass without any rope. This is the trend for modern cruising boats over 30 foot. The length of chain is really important for effective anchoring. The traditional scope calculation uses a simple multiplier for the depth, but there's no agreement on the multiplier to use. It really depends on who you ask. The RYA teaches virtually nothing about anchoring in their training courses, but this diagram is from their website. They quote four times the water depth, so for a three meter depth, they recommend 12 meters of chain. But they don't allow for the bow height of the boat. Add to that to the depth, and their scope reduces to about 2.5 times. This is far too short and is bound to drag. This next chart shows the actual curve for chain length against depth. The curve is called a catenary. The chain should be horizontal when it attaches to the anchor, and it's more vertical at the top due to the weight of the heavy chain. The next chart shows a catenary curve overlaid with the simple scope multiplier lines. They don't match the catenary curve at all. They don't allow for the, when it's flatter at the bottom. If you use the three times scope, your chain will be much too short in shallow water. But the seven times scope needs far too much chain in deeper water, preventing us from anchoring much deeper than about eight meters or 30 feet. But there is a good, simple formula to calculate the chain scope for any depth. 15 meters, that's 50 feet, plus double the depth is a reasonable match for the correct catenary curve, and it's simple to calculate as you anchor. This is just a starting calculation. You may want to edit the numbers to suit your boat. And remember, always let out extra chain, 10 meters or 30 foot or more in strong winds or a difficult anchorage. And here's a few tips for safer anchoring. Always test your anchor when you set it. You need quite a lot of pull to straighten the chain and load up the anchor. 
Let it settle, then slowly build up to half power or full throttle if you have a folding prop. If the anchor's going to drag, find out now, not when you're ashore or in the middle of the night. Avoid anchoring on weed. You can look over the bow, or sometimes you can use Google Maps to find a sandy patch. Use an anchor alarm. Some of the phone apps can let you watch the boat's position even when you're ashore. Let out more chain if it's windy. The extra chain gives you much more holding power by reducing the jerking load on the anchor. And it's a good habit to swim on your anchor if, if it's possible. You will learn a lot about different bottom types and how your anchor copes with them. It's also a lovely way to end the day after an enjoyable sail. Well, that's it. Good sailing, safe anchoring, and sleep well at night.